I was wondering if you could just help us understand what happened between you and Charlie Rose, what that harassment was like, and then how it affected your career. Uh, so I worked for Charlie for around a year and a half on the PBS show. I was his assistant. Um, the beginning was beautiful and exciting. He's talented and amazing. Um, but within a few months, the stories that I talked about at the Washington Post, this behavior of um, beratement and groping continued until the day I left. Did it, you feel, affect or hurt your career later? Did it change the way you viewed your role? I did decide that I didn't want to work in journalism. Mm -hmm. But in full transparency, I'm very happy with what I do today. As one of the organizers now of the Press Forward organization, what do you hope people take away from, from this follow-up Washington Post investigation that really focuses on who knew what when? I hope that people are focusing on the fact that we are dealing with a fairly severe institutional issue of sex, sexism, sexual harassment, um, and rape culture in the United States. And I'm glad that we're focusing at this moment of what's happening in journalism, but this is happening across the country in all walks of life. Do you have reason to believe that others at CBS knew about his behavior and looked the other way? I can't comment on what happened at CBS, but I can tell you that after leaving the Charlie Rose show for the next 12 or 13 years, when anyone met me, mostly strangers, and knew that I worked for Charlie, the first thing they would ask me if the rumors about him were true. So this was a secret that was wide open, and I would be surprised if the, pe the people at CBS didn't know. And of course, folks at the program you were working on, this is the Charlie Rose program, which was mm -hmm. essentially independent uh, and then broadcast on PBS stations. Mm -hmm. Who within that organization knew what was going on? Everyone. 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 It, there, it wasn't, that part wasn't hidden. What has to happen now to ensure that your children, my daughter, that, that this does not continue for future generations? This is something I think about a lot. Um, I believe we're at a moment in the United States where the lens has shifted. Part of the reason why this issue is so pervasive is that we weren't looking at sexual assault in this way before. And right now we all have to reassess where we are experiencing this in our own lives and where our community is experiencing it. And you wrote a column at one point for CNN.com saying it shouldn't call Charlie Rose a villain. Mm -hmm. uh, I think your point was that uh, it's important to make men a part of this conversation mm -hmm. and not try to treat men as, as the, uh, completely the enemy. Is that what you're trying to get at? It is. Um, and I'm also trying for people to see that you can be multifaceted. Charlie is brilliant and kind and talented. And he's also a predator and has some abusive qualities about himself. It's possible to be more than one thing. And I was hoping with that article to allow people to identify the places in themselves where they're out of alignment and start to do their own work. And one more question for you, because there's been these stories recently about a possible comeback for Charlie Rose. Page yeah. Six said that he was plotting an idea for a yeah. TV show. I think that's ridiculous. But more importantly, what do you think? I think that he hasn't been put in time out for coloring on the couch. Um, I think that he's in a position right now where he has an opportunity to do a lot of work. He has time, he has privilege, he has resources, and instead of using that time to work on himself and find out why he'd been displaying this behavior this entire time, he's been trying to figure out how he can come back. I think if he did the work that America would welcome him, to be completely honest, and I think that would be wonderful, but I haven't seen I haven't seen any shift.